Hi, I'm Erin with Create, Dream, and Paint. Today, I'm so excited. This is our first art history lesson. You may think boring, but true, amazing stories live in art history. This video is the same for both age groups, and your parents can partake too. Today, we learn about Vincent van Gogh. We need a pencil, eraser, paint supplies, a plastic or real fork, and our imaginations. Let's get started. Vincent van Gogh is a famous post-impressionist Dutch painter that was born in Zunder, Netherlands, 1853. His father and grandfather were both ministers. He had three sisters and two brothers. Vincent became interested in art at a young age. This interest started by watching and going out to paint with his mother, who was an amateur artist. As a beginning artist, he used to draw with pencils, charcoal, and watercolor. Later in Vincent's life, he used oil paint. Vincent tried his hand at many careers, including teaching, minister, and working in an art gallery. After these careers did not work out, he decided to devote his life to art at the age of 27. Vincent's early work was known to be sad and somber. Documenting the lives of the poor and hardworking he was surrounded by during this time of his life. These paintings used a lot of dark green and brown tone. Vincent's paintings made a drastic change after his move to Paris. It was the first time he experienced painters that worked in post-impressionism style. These artists included Monet, Degas, and Renoir. After experiencing this shift in his life, he started to use brighter colors and his brushwork changed and became more broken. That is the type of painting we are going to paint today. During his life, Vincent was extremely close to his younger brother, Theo van Gogh. Theo worked in an art gallery and was Vincent's main support emotionally and financially. Theo believed in Vincent's art so much, he financially supported Vincent so he could concentrate on his art. What we know about Vincent van Gogh came from the letters he wrote Theo. These letters documented the events in his life as well as included many drawings referencing his surroundings. Vincent died on the 29th of July, 1890 at the age of 37. Six months later, his brother Theo passed away. At this point, Vincent's art was not popular or famous. He had only sold one painting during his lifetime. His art did not get the attention it needed until after his death. This was in thanks to Teo's widow that sold and managed his art after Teo and Vincent's deaths. So it's time for our drawing. Vincent van Gogh had a painting called Starry Night. And we're gonna do an abstract interpretation of that. What that means is it's not gonna be exactly like the painting you see. It's gonna be your own version of it by kind of taking ideas to what you're looking at. So if you wanna look at my abstract interpretation, I've made it where I've had, I have the ground and I have all the cool swirls in the sky. It's kind of like the wind or the movement of the stars is how I look at it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take our paper, cardboard, or canvas, and we're gonna create the drawing. So we're just kind of drawing an idea. It doesn't have to be perfect, because we're gonna go in and paint, and that will add more detail. So I'm gonna kind of do a rolling hills on the ground, like I have in my example. So I'm going to try that. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect because we can change it as we go. I'm going to put another rolling hills here. And then in the sky, I love how the skies are so alive. I'm going to go in and just kind of look like if I was to draw some wind all the way around. And then maybe from the other way, I'm going to draw some wind. I might draw some wind from over here as well. And then I'm going to draw some stars for our, our version of Starry Night. Okay, so I'm just going to put some around here. 
you know, I can put one big one in the corner like I have here. And then I'm going to kind of go in with my swirls and I'm going to create them. So it's kind of like, a sh remember how we're talking about shapes and lines, how we make it a shape so we can paint inside the shape like a coloring book. And see, I just made a mistake here and that is totally okay. This is just an idea. I'm going to make my swirls. Perfect. Okay, this is my drawing. Actually, I'm gonna put one more star right here. So this is my drawing. You can pause this video and come back when you are done your drawing and we're gonna get painting. I'll be back in just a moment. So when I was telling you about Vincent van Gogh, I was talking about the short lines that he puts in his painting for details. So this point in our painting we're not going to worry about those details but that comes at the end and it just adds some magic it's absolutely amazing what this painting is going to look like when it's all done i'm so excited so i kind of decided i'm going to use some purples blues and greens for the ground and if you look he's got some different colors in his painting so if you want to do that that's perfect okay so I'm going to go in and I remember how we discussed color value and how color value is just the lightness and darkness of a color. Well, I want the sky to be a nice purple. I really like purple. So I'm just going to keep adding white because I want it nice and light. So what that means is I can go in with short little lines out of a dark purple and we're going to be able to see it better because the values are different. So this part of the painting is going to be like when we say we're going to color in the coloring book. We are going to just go in and paint the background. So it's not the details yet so don't overthink anything and if you don't like it paint over it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in and paint purple. Ooh, that's so pretty. And do you see some of it might not have, um, my brush might not have mixed everything up. So you see these kind of bands of like a darker purple. And you know what, I'm gonna leave it because I like it. Sometimes I find in paintings, some of the best ideas are the things that can kind of sometimes happen with an accident. So when you, make an accident on your painting, that something just is not the way you expected, I want you to stop and I want you to think about it and say, really, is this adding to the painting or taking away from it? If it is taking away from it, feel free to paint over it and paint what you want. But really think about it because maybe that's just what the painting is needing and you just didn't know it. I love those the accidents you have when you're painting that way. It can teach you a lot about being able to work with things even if you didn't plan on it. Okay, here we go. So see how that's kind of like got some lights and darks in it? I didn't do that on purpose, but wow, I think that looks really good. So I'm gonna keep it like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go around my swirl and definitely send me in the pictures of your paintings oh I'm so excited and I just love looking every day I look at the group paintings and I just can't believe it you guys are just so talented and you should be so proud of yourself sometimes as artists it's hard and you'll think oh I don't like it but just keep practicing and sometimes you just need some time away and to come back and look at your painting with a fresh set of eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna go around this star. See how I'm filling it out like a coloring book? It's exciting. I'm using a bit of a bigger brush, 
just so I can cover more area because my canvas is a little bit bigger than the example I have. If you find you're making lots of mistakes where the brush is too big, you just drop a size and go to a smaller brush. Okay. So we're just gonna go around this star. I'm so excited about putting those yellow stars in. Okay. I love these rolling hills I've painted in here too. It kind of reminds me of toboggan hills. It's kind of tobogganing time, isn't it, for everybody? I have to say I'm not big on the cold, but I think everybody enjoys doing that once in a while. Perfect. There's lots of things you can do in the winter that you can't do in the summer, like ski and snowshoe. I'd have to tell you I'm not very graceful. When I do things like that, I usually fall a lot. But it still doesn't mean that you stop because you can't because like, you're not very good at it. It just means you need more practice. We all have stuff we're good at. Things we love to do. And that's why I like to help you guys paint. It's because painting is my favorite. My fun, I absolutely love to paint. I paint every day. Okay, there we go. So I want you to see, the lines aren't perfect. I might kind of clean up this one little piece right here. But everything else, I'm gonna leave it be a little unperfect. I like how paintings don't look like it came from a factory, that everything is so perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna get a smaller brush and I'm gonna go in with yellow. I'm gonna do a super bright yellow so I can do a duller yellow on top for my short little lines. See, when you change things up, if you look at something, you say, oh, it's dark. Well, what sometimes do you put next to it? Something light or something bright to something more dull. It's always the opposites. Perfect, there we go. Here's the other star. You know what, this is a little bit wet, so I'm just, I'm gonna go in and do the lines a little later. I just wanna show you. I'm gonna go in and paint everything, but I'm gonna go in and draw my better lines later. I just wanna show you the color placements. So I need something a little bit different than the purple so we can see the swirl, right? So I'm gonna put a blue in. So what I'm going to do, oh, look, there's even some yellow because I didn't clean my brush out enough. And I'd have to say, I don't really like that. So like I said, we look at our mistake and we say, do we like it? Not really, not today. And then I just go over it, right? Everything is changeable. I make mistakes all the time in my art. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and paint this star yellow and I'm going to paint the swirls that nice blue. And I'm gonna come back when it's time to do the ground and we're gonna talk about that. So I'll be right back. So we're back, here's the sky. It's just the beginning, don't worry. But see how I put it through and some of the purple got picked up in the blue? I kinda like how that looks. So I'm looking here and I wanna do greens and blues for the rolling hills. So, I've got some different, so I've taken green and I mixed it with some yellow. And then I mixed the green with some blue. You know what, really light blue too. Like almost like a white blue. I'm gonna do that for a light one. So I've got lots of different greens. And remember, you don't need to go buy every shade. So green, green with yellow, green with white, green with blue, green with light blue. Just see what you can come up with. And that's the only way to learn, right? It's just experimenting and seeing. So I didn't really mean to put the line here, but that's okay. I'm gonna go over top of it and make this all one rolling hill. Like a toboggan hill, but not in tobogganing time because it's green, or I'd leave it white. Okay, here we go. I 
love painting rolling hills. So I'm doing a painting, my next paint, big painting I'm gonna be doing has some really amazing rolling hills in it and I can't wait. I'll put it up on Facebook and show you guys when I'm all done. And it was somebody that kind of asked me, well, could you do rolling hills? And I was like, oh, I started looking at pictures and I'm like, oh my goodness, can I ever, it'll be lots of fun. I'm gonna add some water, add some more light blue, just gonna get some more paint going. The thing with acrylics too can be hard is they dry out pretty fast. So just make sure you add some water to it. If they're getting all dried out, just add a little bit of water. You can mix a little bit of color in there. Remember I said, you can't mix wrong. All experimenting with the colors and figuring out what makes what. And we're going to talk about that more next week. We're going to be doing lots of that and I'm really excited. We're going to be doing collage next month. And to do collage, it's really a great time to experiment with different colors. And the reasoning why is because the paper, we're just going to make collage paper. So we're going to make random patterns. So I, that's the time I like to kind of pick colors I might not necessarily put together and see what they do when we mix them. And we're going to talk a bit about color theory. And you can feel very smart. Do you know that there's university students that take actual lessons on color theory because it's so complicated? But we're not going to make it complicated. We're going to make it so you understand how to make colors out of your primary colors and how to out of white and black as well. Because remember, white changes what? The value of your color. Okay, let's add some more paint here. Tone it down with a little bit of blue. Okay. So I'm doing that first rolling hill, kind of on this lighter blue. And then I'm gonna go in with a darker blue, maybe a light, or sorry, a darker green and then a light green. I don't know what I was saying there. So I'm gonna keep going. You just paint each section of your rolling hills a different kind of green and I'm gonna be right back. So who's ready to add some detail? See these short little lines? I'm gonna teach you how to do that in different ways. So for the younger kids, because I've kind of put the video together this week, a great way to make those lines is with a fork. And there's multiple ways to do that. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take some paint onto the fork, just like this. Drag it through and try different things. So you don't like it here as much, but that's okay. I can go in, look, I can go in. Don't put your fork through the canvas. But see how I can break up those lines? Okay, let's try them down here. And then I'm gonna do what? Drag my fork to create some lines. I kind of like the pattern that it makes. So I'm gonna, and if you notice on my example and on the painting, Van Gogh really, he followed kind of like the pattern he was making in the swirls. And like, as the air is moving, kind of like the way it's moving. So trees too, you'll notice if he does a lot of like line work, if he has drawings, and he'll kind of go in the direction that it is. So we're gonna keep working. Remember, you can't do this wrong. This is your art, but I'm just going to go in with a fork. And if you're smaller and you don't want to try the paintbrush, you just keep going and doing this. I like doing this and the paintbrush short lines because it gives me different kind of movement through the painting. And I like that. So I might go with a fork. I do a lot of line making with lots of different things. Like I'll find a piece of cardboard or like a stamp or things like that and I'll go in and work around. But see how I'm working with the kind of the swirls and now I'm gonna work with going around the star and that kind of 
got a bit messy, so I'm just gonna go and kind of scrape that. So I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna use a brush, a smaller brush, and I'm gonna dip it in the water, and I'm gonna kind of roll that brush your small brush into a point. And you can do that on your paint. So if you want a nice fine line, so you know what, let's do this. I want kind of a darker purple, right? I'm gonna mix it a little bit with a lighter. It's not so intense, but watch this. I'm gonna roll my paintbrush, roll my paintbrush. So it makes a point. I do that a lot when I want something to be very small. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull my paintbrush through and I'm making a line, right? But I'm making it work with the direction of my swirls. And don't worry, some of the lines I'll do, you'll see, are nice and short, like a dot, and some are longer. And that's totally up to you. And we're just going to keep working through this. So feel free to go and use your your fork or use your paintbrush or try a bigger paintbrush and see what that does. It's kind of finding out how we want to paint. I don't want to ever make artists that are just kind of like doing things like I, I am. The thing is opening up your mind and knowing that you are super talented and you can do this and you can find out different ways that work for you. And you know what I love is when my students come back and tell me, Erin, guess what works? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never thought of that. And I'll go and try it. We're always learning with each other. Like art is something you're going to never know everything. You are going, everyone has something to kind of contribute. Even with kids, with adults, you, you guys have such creative ideas that sometimes us adults, our brains don't quite work like that anymore. And you guys can come up with great creative ideas. So I'm going to go in there. So I'm just going to keep kind of working around my swirls. And I'm going to go in with some white and some yellow in a second to go around my stars. I think I like that. Let's see how? Just my short little lines, but they're very like, there's lots of expression. It's kind of showing you how the air is moving. And I love that about Van Gogh. He can always make like a nighttime sky look so alive. He really can. It's just so amazing. Just like that starry night painting, we're kind of doing an abstract impression about. And that's not to say that you can't do this again and then add the trees and add the little town and add like a car, like add lots of different kind of things. Cause it's your art. Okay, remember though, I'm gonna roll my brush roll my brush and something to know oh, that's kind of all about the same color as the background so it's not gonna work so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna get lots of white paint but I'm moving my canvas so I can work really easily on these lines I'm not feeling like I'm reaching when I have paintings on my easel, which we are going to do eventually, or I'm going to show you how I do them, is I actually have this big long stick that I put up against my paintings, or I flip my canvases around so I can reach them better, so I can make better lines. I'm not kind of reaching and shaking because I'm uncomfortable. I just work my way through. Okay, look at that. That's so much fun. Okay, I'm going to add some light, light purples to my stars. I'm going to work my way around my stars. See how it's just very expressive. Almost makes that sky look like it's moving. But I want you to know you can still use your fork. And that is just fine. It's not cheating. Do you know how many artists use mark making tools? That's what we call like when we use our fork. We use a mark making tool and lots of artists do them. They'll make them themselves at a cardboard. They'll buy some, but I always like to find ones around the house. Sometimes I'll put things down and I'll paint kind of around it too. And so if 
I'm not doing this, but if I put this down, I could kind of paint around and see how that gives it round kind of line. You can use things around your house. Perfect, here we go. Nice light purple. Surprised we haven't heard from Zach yet. He's in the other room and he's being so very quiet. I don't know. We might hear from him in a little bit. He didn't want to paint. He usually likes doing it like you guys do. He likes he likes this class when he likes it. And usually when I'm deciding to paint, it's not his painting time. That's a nice thing about this class. Is that you get to paint when you want to. It's not like a have to. Sometimes when you have to paint or you have to practice something, it's not so much fun as it is when you want to. Okay, let's work our way around. Let me work my way around the star. Perfect. Look at that. Perfect. Love it. Love it. See, I like that, but you can go in and do even more mark making if you want. See, I have a lot of yellow in here that I didn't put in this one, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go in with some of my colors for the ground. And let's do what we did before. I'm gonna have fun with this, with the fork. I'm gonna actually put my fork in to the yellow and the white. And I'm going to just drag it through my rolling hills. Like we're seeing, this is mark making. This is part of art. It is not cheating. I promise. It's actually kind of fun. I know there's a lot of artists out there and that's how they do most of their abstract work is mark making tools. So look and see. When you see a painting you really like, well, how could I do that? Or how did they do that? I bet you you could come up with lots of options, probably even options that that artist hasn't even thought about. Okay. Just working my way around with the fork. And then I'm gonna go in with, i put that in the water because I think I'm done with that. But I'm gonna go in with that brush of mine I really like. The one that I can kind of roll into a color. And I'm gonna roll it into like a dark purple. I like to add that a little bit and it kind of balances. Yes, I know there's probably not any purple in the ground, but I like how I can balance some of the sky into the ground. See how your eye kind of goes from purple to purple to purple and it bounces all the way around. And the one thing we're gonna notice that I realize now is I have to add a little bit purple right here just so I can kind of look at this side of the painting it doesn't look almost lopsided because I just have such an intense dark color only in one area and that's not to say you can't do that sometimes that's what we want we want our eye to like really push onto one side and that's the kind of magic we can make with color that we can just put that one color in here and it's gonna like bring our eye there perfect look at that Oh my gosh, this is looking so good. I love working on these. They're kind of a lot of fun. I could just sit here and put little tiny short lines all over this entire. I probably could do it a little too much, to be honest. Okay, here we go. So let me know too if there's anything that you guys would like to learn that I haven't covered, like animals or a building or for our art history, which we're gonna do once a month, let me know, like, are you interested in painting? I know somebody called me and told me that their child was interested in learning about the Mona Lisa. So do you know what I did? I do know a little bit about it. And I listened to a few podcasts and I got out an art book from the library. And what great stories there are. Stories I didn't even know existed about the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa took so long to paint, but 
the stories aren't just about the painting. It's about how the painting was stolen. And they're not even sure if the real Mona Lisa is the real Mona Lisa. But we're going to get into that another day. But I hope you're having fun today. This is just great. And I would love to see the paintings you guys make. And see if you can get your parents to make them too. See if you can get them to send it in. I think this should be a family thing. Especially with Art History Day maybe. There's lots of things moms and dads can learn. I bet you they were great artists, or they still are. Because sometimes as adults, we just don't have the time to, to paint and imagine and see how beautiful things are around us. And you guys can help that with your parents. Something we kind of lose, and it's super important to hold on to. Landscapes do that for me. When I look at a good landscape, I... It's like I'm a little kid looking up in the clouds again. I used to always be in trouble for looking in the clouds. I was such a daydreamer, they said. I'm actually going to add a little bit of yellow in here just because I like it. There. Well, that's kind of fun. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow just around my stars. I just think it might add. Remember I said, try it. And if you don't like it, paint over it. There we go, guys. I'm kind of excited. I've been planning next month and I've been planning a few different special things that I'm going to be able to tell you hopefully next month about what's going to come up because, oh, as a group and community, I think we need to, to, you know, not just see my paintings too, but have other artists come on and show you what they do. So I've been talking to a few artists I know to see if they would come and help you guys with, with something they do. Because we're all good at different things, right? Perfect. So I'm super excited and we'll talk about that more, but I love this. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. So you guys finish it up and let me know how it goes and send me pictures. I cannot wait to see. Okay, I'll talk to you later.